Hello viewers, so this one is for anyone that likes motorcycles, tanks, or snowmobiles because my design here can incorporate all three of them. When I was a design student, I had to learn a program called SolidWorks and that's the program I still use today. It was made by a, it's made by a French company, Dassault, and they're known for making Mirage fighter jets and uh, some small commercial airplanes. So this is a program that you may or may not know about but it, a lot of things that you own were made using this program so it's solid modeling not surface modeling like animations use surface modeling but anyways that's not important so i ended up taking this class two times at school because my first teacher was pretty lame he wasn't very inspirational so i took the class a second time and in that class the assignment was to do snowmobiles now i've never ridden a snowmobile because when i was a kid my neighbor crashed into a tree on one and died, so I kind of had a fear of them. But the odd thing is, I love motorcycles. I have owned several motorcycles and still have a few today. Little motorbikes and stuff, so I'll probably die on one of those one day. But anyhow, so uh, because I want to ride a motor motorcycle, but I had to somehow figure out a way to combine it with the snow. So, um, I guess you'll see the end, obviously, but uh, here's an inspiration page here. And so I know I wanted to have a rotary, twin rotor, rotary engine because it's smooth and linear power. And then there's a motorcycle out there called the Bimota Tessie. It's pretty old now. But it has this interesting front arm suspension where it's like a swing arm in the front and then a steering linkage. And some BMWs today actually have this type of system and it prevents anti-dive. When a, motor, a regular motorcycle with forks brakes all the weight shifts forward as the force compress and so that's not good for balance so uh, this thing has anti-dive properties and then uh, I stole some ideas from the RC uh, truck world the uh, Traxxas T-Max or X-Max or Revo they have these ball suspension systems where you know they, the, the uprights literally pivot on uh, steel balls and then obviously I needed to have a tank tread because snowmobiles always have that in the rear and then uh, I used Mecha or Gundams as my inspiration for the visual language of my design. So as a usual design process goes, um, I start with initial sketches. These are just all random ideas, you know, different seating positions, different tra track systems, some with skis, some without skis. And then um, it was on this page here in the upper right, I thought, how can I make a tank tread steer? because normal tanks don't steer, they just they ba literally break one tread and speed up the other tread and that's how tanks steer. They skid steer, put it that way. But I thought if I just put a pivot in between each track link and that pivot will allow the, the tracks to then steer left and right. And so it was at this point in time I realized I didn't need to have skis or something like that like on the left images here. And I could just have one continuous track like a tank that can actually steer. All right. So then uh, here's some images of the frame uh, and I end ultimately went with an edgy mechanical like Gundams and Mecha and stuff like that. And uh, I really like stealth fighters and stuff, the appearance of them. So, okay, so on uh, this page here, after I figured out the packaging of a human being, the motor and the general suspension, I figured out the bodywork at last. So on the upper right image, you'll actually see uh, this black figurine here. That's actually an action figure. It's like a G.I. Joe action figure, 110 scale. And so I use that figure to figure out the geometric position of the bodywork. You'll see it's a pretty big vehicle. Okay. So here on this page, this is how uh, the steering mechanism is supposed to work. Uh, you know, you got handlebars like a normal motorbike here on the top. And then uh, that pushes a rod down the suspension arm and then it pushes this, I don't know what you would call that piece with the slot in it, but it'll push it forward and back and then this little pin in the center of the upright here will slide within that slot and so that's what causes the front wheel to steer left or right. Hopefully that makes sense. Okay, so then I uh, also measured out real pieces. So on this image you'll see the shocks actually come from RC vehicles. The red one came from a Traxxas T-Max, I think. The blue ones may have came from a, like a 118 scale RC truck or something. This little black upright on the left side near the wheel, that is also from a T-Max and so is the uh, drive shaft. And then there's a tiny little chrome cannon air filter that's used on RC vehicles, so I put that in there. All the uh, 
white stuff there is like FDM plastic, 3D printed, and then all this yellowish stuff is printed SLA because I needed a, I wanted to have really super tight fits. But you can see it's snaking, you know, it's turning left and right. So that's basically uh, all the stuff before I had to paint it. Uh, okay, so ultimately after painting it and assembling it, this is what I ended up with. Uh, the headlights on this are actually mag lights, mini mag lights, and uh, either triple A mag lights or double A mag light, and I popped those in to become the headlights of this. And then all the nuts and bolts are real aluminum or steel pieces, so they all fit, you know, for real. This is a 110 scale model again. That action figure back there, I think, is a different G.I. Joe action figure. I forget which what character it is. But anyways, uh, here's another view. You know, I made a little diorama base and stuff like that. You can see the little stainless steel pins in the tracks. Uh, and so those are the pivot points that I sketched out earlier. You know, they allow the track to steer left and right. Okay, here's a rear view. I didn't paint the back red there. That little triangle above the track is supposed to be a brake light, but I ran out of time. I was designing a full uh, 187 scale car museum built inside of a mountain, and I built that model. And then I also had to design and, design and build two coffee machines all in one se semester. So I had to, you know, make my sacrifices with my time. Okay, so here's another view. You know, it's not a symmetric uh, motorbike. So after I finished this model, I thought, you know, I accomplished something really nice, you know, but uh, thinking I did design something original, but I didn't. Uh, no matter how smart you think you are, there was billions of people born before you and they thought the same thing as you. So uh, another student later on said, hey, that's pretty cool. It reminds me of something I saw on a magazine cover. And uh, it wasn't this magazine cover. I couldn't find the one. But uh, it was either popular mechanics or popular science of a snow motorcycle. But looking at this one from 1972, I think, it's a motorcycle with a track on it, right? So it's uh, not an original idea what I worked on. And then I found this image here. This looks like it's from World War II. Uh, and that's, again, a, a motorcycle with a track on it. And then uh, soon after my project, someone this ended up somewhere in a popular science. And uh, again, tracked motorcycle. There have been many, many, many throughout history. So, anyways, uh, yeah, I, I know that uh, my idea wasn't that great. But anyways, so let's continue on. Uh, you know, maybe you've skipped forward by now, but uh, ultimately you want to see this in 164 scale, right? So, here we are. Okay, so yeah, there we go. It's not painted the same as the other one. Uh, the 10 scale model, I painted the bodywork black. Could, but I felt that if I painted this bodywork black, it would be hard to see because the tank tread itself is is black, right? So now this being 164 scale, it's all one uh, printing. There are no separate pieces or anything like that. I just painted it in a way that makes it look like it might be separate pieces. But this is all one piece of plastic, okay? And I printed it on my little Frozen Sonic Mini 4K. Okay, so let me get off this thing here. And uh, I'll go over some more of the details here in this, in this miniature. So another thing, I have these uh, alloy wheels, right? And uh, this green section, these are supposed to be like inflated rubber. Not quite a car tire, they'd be thinner because most of the abuse would be taken up by the track itself. But I, I want to do that because I want to have a little bit of suspension uh, within the actual you know, tires themselves. So, if, uh, really small frequency suspension. And then if there's a big hit, that's when, you know, the actual sh shocks come into play. So, um, you might ask, what are these things? These are locators, you know, they keep the, uh, the tank tread in general line with the rear. Because without it, there might be so much flex side to side this way that the, the track might fall off the rear wheel. And then, uh, it might be hard to tell, but there's also two in here as well, and that's keeping the top half from falling off as well, or from falling off this part when it comes out this way, right? So there's actually four, one, two, three, four, five, six, uh, you know, bogey wheels or alignment wheels, okay? The rear wheel itself is a smaller diameter, 
I want the big one, a really big front wheel so it can just roll over obstacles like entire tree tree trunks and rocks and stuff like that. Uh, today's snowmobiles have relatively small uh, track track systems in the back and then relatively small skis. But uh, you know, I was going for like a just a tank really. I want this thing to be able to plow through whatever it feels like, you know, whether it's snow or bushes or whatever. You know, this being this far forward, it could literally probably run into a tree and run over it. Okay. So, uh, this is my impression of that k and filter there. I blocked that off there. Uh, so yeah, the twin rotary uh, engine there. So you got dual exhaust coming out, but they're feeding over to this side of the vehicle. And then there's a bunch of, supposed to be a bunch of baffles in there and stuff like that before it exhausts the bike. Uh, I put on some, uh knockoffs you know some knockoff center caps there and then uh this twin rotor i'm not sure if you can see but this these are supposed to be like a chain a chain system so this is supposed to be the transmission part of the transmission here all these uh, bulges here and then it feeds into the swing arm but within this swing arm there's a, a transmission system of some sort and then also a 90 degree you know bend output there so it's a shaft drive shaft driven system because if you're in the snow you don't want a bunch of ice or uh, really if you're running in the woods you don't want a bunch of twigs and stuff jamming up your uh, your drivetrain so and then uh, here's a one perimeter braking system again uh, which is on my uh, road road concept uh, the reason for a perimeter braking is it's a bigger swept surface so the brakes don't get too hot there's no front brake uh, you know, if you think about regular snowmobiles, they don't have front brakes either, they just have skis. So all the braking is done in the rear wheel in this case. But it also doesn't, it doesn't need front brakes because the entire track is touching the ground, right? <laughs> That's a lot of traction. So as long as, uh, you know, this thing can stop the tread, it'll be, it'll be good. There are some indexes here, you know, they run between the, the, the wheels. There's actually a groove here, you know, to keep the, to help keep the track on on the the wheels and not falling off okay uh six piston uh brakes brake caliper back there because this is the only one and then uh motorcycle controls a couple buttons and stuff little speedo tachometer in this format you know warning lights and stuff like that and then uh, this time i did paint the brake the brake light there are no turn signals this isn't really meant for uh, road use I suppose one could add them later but uh, I didn't bother um, and then I changed the color this time around to gold instead of blue and then a bunch of LEDs and stuff like that auxiliary LEDs as well in case there's a failure or something or it's really just styling okay so nothing moves unfortunately it would be too difficult but here's that linkage system that pushes this golden rod and that rod pushes this thing and then this shaft you know goes this way henceforth the wheel goes this way as well okay so I think that's it a uh, couple vents here to help cool off the uh, the lights in case they get too hot and that is it this is the intake system of course air filter big cone filter and then on the other side this is the air plenum box and stuff like that and those feed in to the, the rotary engine Okay, yeah. Alright, so let me uh let me put it uh back on this spin thing here. And uh, let's compare the size of this thing. So here's one of these one sixty four scale action uh not action figure figurines. So you can see how big this thing is because it's meant to plow through anything it needs to. I would imagine that this would be for military use, you know, for reconnaissance and stuff like that. So, and then uh, here's a 164 scale KTM RC8. And I've just been too lazy to paint the thing. So again, it's a small, small uh, motorcycle compared to this this uh, thing I had designed. Let me get this guy over here. And then here's a G-Wagon. Okay, so the thing is actually, I guess, longer than a G-Wagon. Well, it's around the length of a G-Wagon. So, 
The seat is quite massive because uh, you might have to have a passenger, so you could theoretically have tandem, and or a lot of military guys are carrying huge backpacks, you know, with all sorts of field gear. So by having a larger seat, you could still sit on the front half, and then your backpack would just rest on the ba the back part of that thing. So that's the intention as to why that that's the size that it is. Okay. Well, anyways, uh, yeah, I I dearly like my uh, 3D printer. I do have a 10 scale model of this, but uh, my cat's knocked it off the shelf several times, so it's just all in pieces. It's a disaster, and the real RC truck shocks bent the frame because they were pushing out the the plastic. So. I'm glad that I got my 3D printer because now I can bring this to 164 and you guys can enjoy it, hopefully. Okay, guys, well, I appreciate you watching again, and uh, I'll see you in the next uh, original design.